Hello and welcome to my short video series on 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers. This will be a beginner's guide for 3D modeling basically geared towards 3D printing community. In this video I'm going to go over using configurations and a little bit into the design table. If you're anything like me, you use SolidWorks for anything including any construction projects. So what I have is I have a single file for all my boards whether they be planks or beams so I'll show you how I create my configurations for that so we'll start with a sketch so this is if you know you're going to be using configurations and especially if you're using a design table you want to actually rename your dimensions so they're easier to follow so we'll start with a standard 2x4 and if you come over here where this says D1 at sketch 1 that's the standard default naming for the dimension in SOLIDWORKS so if I call that width thickness and we'll just extrude that and now if we double click on the extrude you'll see it brings up the length dimension We can rename that length. If we want it to look good, we can change the material and actually change it to wood. And it will get visual properties of an actual board. So now that we have that we'll come over here we'll rename this configuration we'll call it 2 by 4 by 8 and as a general rule I copy that into the description field and if you come down here you'll notice what this will show up in any bill materials or any assembly. Right now it's the document name which is whatever you save it as. I have this saved as a board.sldprt so in your bill materials it'll just say board which is fine if until you start getting into configuration. So what I do is come down here click configuration name now my bill, bill materials will show up as a 2x4x8 So if we come back over here, now if you notice, there's nothing here that says anything about configurations in the dimensions tab, and that's because there's only one configuration. So now if I come over here, right click uh, up here, add configuration, we'll call this a 2 by 4 by 10 down here click configuration name now if we click on this dimension see here this configuration button shows up so this one up here only controls the tolerance per configuration so if the dimension's the same but the tolerance changes, you'd use this button. But this is the actual dimension. So if you come down here, click configurations, you can tell it all configurations, which is what it defaults to, which is this dimension stays the same for all your configurations. You can change it to just this configuration, or you can actually tell it which configuration you want this dimension to change for. It will remain the same for all the others generally I use this configuration for just about everything so now if we come down here and tell it we want this one to be 10 foot long so 
So now there's our 10 foot board, here's our 8 foot board. And you can do the same thing, let's say we want a 4x4x8. Four by four by So we come down here, that's still 8 foot, edit our sketch. This will remain three and a half, but if we come up here, we want to change this configuration to 3.5. And while we're in here, we'll change this one to this configuration as well. So now that we have our configurations done, I'll show you how to do a design table. So we've got three configurations right now. So if we want to add a whole bunch quickly, we can go to Insert, come down to Tables, and a Design Table. You have to have Microsoft Excel installed to use the design tables. I don't believe it works with any other software package. So here you can either create a blank one from scratch, which can be done, it's kind of a pain. So I always use the auto create because I've already set some dimensions per configuration. So this will just pick that up, it will automatically insert those into an Excel spreadsheet. And you can see here where it's created my three configurations and all the dimensions associated with those configurations. So if we just click outside the box anywhere, that goes away. So now if we come over here and we right click, edit and table a new window, it seems to be the easiest way uh, to actually utilize the design table. You can do it within a window within SolidWorks, but it's just easier to open it in a new window. So let's say, so we've got our 2x4x8, 2x4x10, 4x4x8, so let's say I wanted a 4x4x10. So I can just copy this, change that to 10, and the nice thing with Excel is you can use formulas, standard Excel formulas. So if, I, you, so if you know you want your description to always be the same as the configuration, you can just tell it you want that to equal that. And now our description will always be the same as our configuration name. So if we come over here, this is where we la labeled our dimensions. There's our thickness, our width, and our length. We know we want this to be 10 foot. And then if we close this out, see that it comes up and tells us it created a new configuration from the design table. There's our 4x4x10. Four by four by now let's say you want to add some features to one specific configuration. So let's say we want to have a railing arm. So we'll come up here, add configuration, and we'll call it railing. And So on this one, we want to taper the ends, so we'll create a sketch. Let's just extrude that through. And we have our railing. So now if you come back over here, and if we come back to a different configuration, you can see that that extrude has been suppressed for all other configurations. So any new features you add after creating the configurations will not automatically propagate to the original configurations. And if you also notice, see how this little X is here for these, that means these are in the design table, this one's not yet. So if we come over here, edit design table, a new window, 
it'll pop up and it'll ask you if you So it's asking if you want to add this configuration to the design table as well as these features. If you don't want them in there right now, I recommend hitting this tick box. So that way next time if you do decide you want them in the design table, they'll show up and you can add them here. You can add them manually. So you can see our railing showed up. But you'll notice it doesn't propagate the formulas from before. So we can just manually do that. And if you notice here, this is blank. So it has suppressed. That's what the S stands for, suppressed. It has suppressed the features in the existing configurations. But this is blank. It, sh it will show unsuppressed if we open it back up again. Notice how it automatically propagated the U for unsuppressed. And if you want to add that to, let's say, the 2x4x10, you can just change these to unsuppressed and it will add those as, to the other configuration as well. So now if you're working with assemblies, when you insert notice it'll ask you which configuration you want to insert so we can click that this will stay up and you can just keep clicking and adding that same file in multiple times and now you'll notice these are all the 2x4x8 configuration but we can change right click on it come up here we can change that to 2 by 4 by 10 or if we just click on it change that to a 4 by 4 by 10 and we can change that to a railing Now I will show you how to manually create a design table. So if we go back to insert tables, design table, I want to just create a blank one. So while this is open, It's asking you what configurations and what parameters you want in there. So I'm going to select all the configurations. I'm also going to select this and show you. So now it's showing the configurations. If we come over here, if you double click, it's bringing up the, the state of the feature. You double click on the dimension it'll bring that bit dimension into the design table and you can do the same for sketches you have to double click the sketch and it brings the sketch in see this is what I was saying it's kind of a pain to get to everything double click on that dimension double click on that dimension so now if we come over to our design table asking if we want to add these two 
the design table. And see how it's not laid out quite as nicely as the automatically created one. You can also go through and if you want to unsuppress features, come back over here, unsuppress, and if you want to change dimensions you can do that as well. And then you'll notice when you edit the design table it would automatically change that from suppress to unsuppress for that feature. Thanks for watching and make sure if you have any questions or would like to see something else post it down in the comments below. And So on this one we want to taper the ends, so we'll create a sketch, Just extrude that through. And we have our railing. So now if you come back over here, and if we come back to a different configuration, you can see that So it's asking if you want to add this configuration to the design table as well as these features. If you don't want them in there right now, I recommend hitting this tick box. So that way next time if you do decide you want them in the design table, they'll show up and you can add them here. You can add them manually. So you can see our railing showed up. but you'll notice it doesn't propagate the formulas from before. So we can just manually do that. Features in the existing configurations, but this is blank. It, sh it will show unsuppressed if we open it back up again. Notice how it automatically propagated the U for unsuppressed. And if you want to add that to, let's say, the 2x4x10, you can just change these to unsuppressed and it will add those as to the other configuration as well. When you insert, you'll notice it'll ask you which configuration you want to insert. So we can click that, this will stay up, and you can just keep clicking and adding that same file in multiple times. And now you'll notice these are all the 2x4x8 configuration. But we can change, right click on it, come up here, and we can change that to 2x4x10. Or and we can change that to a railing. And 
Now I will show you how to manually create a design table. It's asking you what configurations and what parameters you want in there. So I'm going to select all the configurations. I'm also going to select this and show you. So now it's showing the configurations. If we come over here, if you double click, it's bringing up the, the state of the feature. If you click on the dimension, excuse me, double click on the dimension, it'll bring that dimension into the design table. And you can do the same for sketches. You have to double click the sketch, that brings the sketch in. See, this is what I was saying, it's kind of a pain to get to everything. Double click on that dimension, double click on that dimension.